Hello, everybody. I'm here with Joseph Gittler. He is um, the founder of Leka Israel. Um, so, hi, Joe. How are you? Really, really glad to uh, have the opportunity to interview you and meet with you this evening. So, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, Joseph Gittler? Sure. Uh, thank you, Hanna. Great to see you. We know each other for a long time, um, and it's great to be on. I'm an, a proud alumni of Camp Moshava. Unfortunately, I only started in Machal, so my um, my tenure was short. But it's wonderful uh, to have that as part of my history. And my brothers all went there. I grew up in New York and New Jersey. And when I was 26 years old, I made Aliyah to Israel with my wife and daughter, and now three daughters and two sons, and we proudly live in Ranana. Tell me a little bit about one of your fond memories from that summer in Machal, Joseph. Wow, so Ma Machal, I was only there for the first month. Um, I know you probably have a lot of kids from Boca. So one thing I remember is that Ephraim Goldberg was in my bunk. So that's one thing I remember. He's very popular now, <laughs> so I might as well give him a shout out. He does it for me every once in a while. Um, look, I just remember that it was very eye-opening because the other camps I had been to before that didn't have a program where it was a totally separate camp in a camp. And that I remember just being amazing, like, oh my God, you mean we don't have to be with all the other kids the whole summer? So that was something really special. Um, I only was able to go for one month, probably because it was so full that I couldn't have stayed for two months. But I was really thrilled to have been a part of it and then to continue on as a staff member for a few years and to be uh, color work, I don't know what you call it, an IO captain general. General, uh, in general, my first, general. General in my first year staff together with one of my closest friends, Ronnie Blaustein, now Hertzfeld. So that's true. Uh, so Joe, tell me, you came to Israel, you came to Israel, how did Lekha Israel come, come to be? Like so what was Yes, I made Aliyah in 2000, and in 2003, at the height of the Second Intifada, where there was so much violence, um, and a little bit like today, no tourists, not great business, um, I got very concerned because I had so many people knocking on my door, asking for charity, and it wasn't always the same kind of people that I was used to asking for charity. A lot of them looked, and when I spoke to them, they were people who had been working, had good jobs, and now they were really struggling. And I remember at the same time that every bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, wedding, hotel that I was lucky enough to go to, everyone would talk about all the food that was going to waste. Everyone, any kid who's watching this video, who's been to Israel and stayed in a hotel, everyone says the same thing. What are they doing with all this extra food from breakfast? Wow. And I said to myself, well, there's so many people who need help. And there seems to be so much wasted food, we got to put two and two together. And that's really how Leket Israel gets started. I started to call up caterers and ask them if I could pick up their extra food. And almost all of them said yes. And then one thing led to another. And today we're the National Food Bank of the State of Israel. And we have 120 employees and 25 trucks. And we give out millions of meals a, meal, a year. And this year, we'll probably give out over 50 million pounds of fruits and vegetables, and we help hundreds of thousands of Israelis. Wow, that's amazing. I think I remember, um, Joe, I think I remember like hearing about your first truck. I don't remember if it was my brother, Ellie, who told me about it, but I remember hearing about that first truck that you must have, that you must have taken to go to some hotel or some wedding or bar mitzvah or something like that, collecting that food. Amazing. Yep. Okay, Joe, what would be your message to, you know, like just high school kids, young people today about affording change and how to make a difference? Okay, so, well, first of all, we, we miss you all over here in Israel and uh, hope to see you all back here soon. We're missing all your volunteering. So I, I think my message would be that you know, I'm lucky, I'm what's, called, I'm what's called a social entrepreneur. I started something on my own, but to make a difference in this world, you don't have to do that. There's so many wonderful organizations that need help from any way you can think, whether it's organizationally, technology, research, just hard work and sweat. Um, 
so much help is needed in so many different ways. If you have an idea and it's something that's not happening already and you have the capabilities or the interest, jump right into it. If that's not you and you just wanna help, there's so much room for people. I see we have over 50,000 volunteers a year helping us in Leket and we need every single one of them. So find that area that you're interested in. The organizations exist. You can find them, do your research. And you know, we, we look forward to join, greeting you at Leket or one of the other great organizations in Israel or wherever you're watching this from. Amazing. And tell me one last thing, Joe, how has like the um, pandemic of COVID-19, how has it like affected Leket and how you operate and, and has it affected the amounts of people that you feel like? Okay, so I, I, well, that was a little cut off, but I think I got the gist of it. Um, so le <laughs> the pandemic has changed everything. Uh, the type of food we're getting, the amount of food we're getting, uh, as you can imagine, because the hotels are closed and the corporate cafeterias are closed and the army is not working as, as normal, um, most of the cooked meals sure. that like it normally gets have completely disappeared. Um, we've been purchasing food over the last few months, but now we're starting to run out of money to do that. So we've cut back on that severely. Fruits and vegetables, because all those places aren't buying fruits and vegetables, the exact opposite has happened and we have way more fruits and vegetables than we normally have. Problem is we don't have a lot of volunteers because wow. people don't wanna come or even if they wanna come, we're not always comfortable with having big groups of volunteers. It's a really, really tough situation for us. Um, add to that the uncertainty of finances and philanthropy and one other layer, which is this is actually a time that organizations like LEC could actually need to expand. And we have so much more demand. There's so many more people in need. You know, one statistic to leave you with, unemployment in Israel was 4% on March 1st. Right. Historically low. Today, today we had a new number, 21%. And I fear that unfortunately, even if the economy really opens up quickly, we're not going to get much lower than that. A lot of those people are going to be out of work for a long time. And so we have to do our best to not just do what we were doing before COVID, but actually increase what we're doing. And let me ask you one other question, Joe. Is it, you said something about volunteering before. Is, could you, would Leckett be interested in having small groups of like um, youth volunteer, like groups of 10, you know, uh, 10 kids at a time? Yeah, we could probably do that depending on the age of the kids. Normally we take everyone, but today we mm -hmm. just want to be comfortable that, that it's the kind of kids who are of the age that will social distance and listen to the rules and okay. keep their masks on. But the answer is yes, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I wish, okay. I, I wish it could be the kids who are from overseas because we need them back. But we right. are very happy to have even Israeli kids coming and volunteering. Okay. Let's sit there. Right, can I, can Joe, I ask one I more question? One yes, more question please, you Thank you. Uh, maybe you just want to share with us one. You have, I'm sure you have a thousand stories of, you know, those heartwarming stories where somebody calls you and didn't know how they were going to, you know, put food on the table. Maybe you have one story that stands out from the beginning days or even most recently you Good want to question. share. Good question. Well, I'll tell you a story that I just heard last week. I wasn't there, but one of our staff members called me and she was in Tel Aviv. Uh, doing some filming and she went to one of the major soup kitchens called La Sova in South Tel Aviv who's one of our primary partners and usually La Sova is filled with a lot of Russian immigrants and African refugees and people homeless people and people with drug issues it's really a tough tough place and a woman comes up to her and starts speaking in English and says to her I volunteered for Leket. I've donated for Le to Leket. I'm part of the Leket family for years. And I've quickly fallen on such hard times that here I am eating in this soup kitchen. And of course, then she said, I can't talk anymore. Don't put me on video. She started to cry. Now understand, I'm not saying there are no poor Anglos in Israel. 
but usually to fall to that level, our community doesn't see that much of it. And that was an extremely painful reminder for how quickly our savings can be depleted and how quickly uh, those of us can lose our jobs and need help. And I, I, it was just such a painful thing to hear and just another push for me and my staff to make sure that we're doing everything in our power to help those in need. Joe, I really want to thank you for your time. My pleasure. Anytime, I want to thank really, you anything for I can do. You know, for me and for, uh, for all of us in uh, Mosheva Ayo, and um, we really, Tizkulu meets both for the Maasim Tovim, and we should continue okay. to be able to hear good things and really see a big change. And um, please, God, whatever we can do, you know, so you out there, all Chanichim and Chanichot, everybody, listen to what Joseph said. He said some really, really important things. And sometimes it's important not just only to think of ourselves, but to think of others. So Joseph, Yashar Koch to you and all of your staff. Um, and thank you for sharing with us. And please give um, all your family my very, very best. And uh, your mom and your brothers, my special love. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for... Bye, everybody. You.